Hey guys, you got the dude man here, and uh, for a while I've been telling you that I was going to share with you who my all-time favorite fretless bass player was. And um, in fact, earlier this year I had the privilege to interview him. So my favorite all-time favorite fretless player is someone you never heard of, most likely. His name is Brian Wolschlegel. And uh, he was a very good friend of mine, um, and uh, I say was because uh, shortly after the interview, uh, he passed away. I wanted to tell you a little bit about a um, couple of the projects that we did over the years in case you wanted to hear what he did. Now I'm going to put this up here. This is a Jazz X is our first CD. Uh, that we worked on. This is around 2005 and even though it says Jazz X, it's actually more blues. I had some jazz sounding songs that I wanted to work on and uh, we put a couple of them on here but uh, Brian brought in a bunch of cool blues stuff and he played guitar on it uh, of course and I think he might have done some bass tracks on that uh, record as well but he was the engineer also. So um, the one that he played almost primarily all the fretless on it is this one. Uh, Dimension X is the name of the project and uh, CD is Hazel Fire. And it's kind of like a neo blue soul thing. Um, it's got some rock stuff like, you know, kind of like cool sound and rock stuff on there too. But um, I mean, look at this, uh, look at this CD. This is really a uh, work of art here. Check this out. Look at that, man. It's got all the pictures of people who, all the studio players who played on it. And on the back, you've got credits and set li uh, song list and all that. The last CD we released was Backseat Driver. And this was our uh, jam band. And that's uh, Alien Theory is the name of it. And... Uh, it's also a pretty nice CD, crazy, uh, crazy CD, uh, uh, what do you call it, the print on the CD itself is kind of a cool picture. And uh, Brian played some wicked, wicked guitar on this. I played all the bass, and uh, I've actually, I'm kind of, uh, I, I feel like I did a pretty good job on the bass on this. Not fretless, but... Um, so that's that's some really really cool jam band stuff and uh, the drummer Mark Hare on that was like whoa man he was like really good too. We were all at uh, on our game for that CD and it was all made up on the spot and uh, incredible what what you can do sometimes when you just make st stuff up on the spot with the right people. We just clicked and um, so anyway uh, I'm gonna give you a tip while I got this in my hand. I uh, put these uh, strings on my fretless bass and they're D'Addario uh, XL nylon tape wound and um, these are a medium gauge but um, these strings they're black in color and they're really smooth feeling and they're the best sounding and playing fretless strings that I've ever used. So I wanted to share that with you, the D'Addario XL, and I'm not endorsed by them or anything, but I thought I'd share that with you while I had that <laughs> string package in my hand. So the interview is like 45 minutes, and that's after it was edited. And I didn't want to cut it short because this is one of his last anyway, interviews. Uh, we were going to go back and redo it, shorten it up, and get a better sound quality, but... You know, he passed away, and that was that. And uh, so this is what I had to work with, and I wasn't about to throw it out. So it's got some great information on there and uh, kind of a whole retrospective uh, uh, on what he's done musically since he started playing. Hey, everybody. got the dude man with you, and I'm here to do a fretless bass video for you all. And um, I got my very good longtime friend, Mr. Brian Walschlegel, with me. And um, he is actually my favorite 
fretless bass player for a good reason because he's uh, very good at it. I've been playing bass for 42 years uh, as of this uh, video recording date and um, I got into fretless just a little bit over the years on and off. I couldn't really get a good grasp on it. I didn't know what I was doing and uh, we started recording together way back in uh, 2005 I think it was Brian. But this uh, what we're going to be working on today is more of like a like a modern R&B thing. But anyway, it's got some great fretless lines. Brian wrote just about the whole CD, and he did a great job. Beautiful music. We recorded it. When I first heard it, I, I loved the songs. And uh, I said, you got to put that out. you got to release it. So we started working on it together. I was working with him to uh, finish up some recording and, uh, you know, uh, just get it out there. And uh, when it was done, I was just blown away at what he did with the fretless stuff. In fact, most of the fretless bass was recorded before I even uh, came on board. And he asked me if I wanted to record my own bass tracks. Uh, but I said, I'm not going to be able to play anything better than what you did. What you did was awesome. So we're going to uh, put on our headphones and pick up our guitars. And we're going to be doing some... Uh, playing to the tracks and uh, at the end of the video I'll uh, give you a link where you can listen to the whole CD and play to it if you want but for those uh, bass players out there who want to learn how to play fretless this is how I started getting into it a little more I learned what Brian did and I was realized that what he did wasn't really complicated but it was very melodic and he's got a great tone and a part of his big part of his tone, other than his hands, is his bass. He's got a Warwick thumb bass. This is a six string fretless uh, thumb bass. And it's a neck through instrument, active uh, electronics, beautiful bass. And I've recorded with that myself. Really heavy, too. <laughs> Very heavy. It's an anchor, but uh, that's part of how you get the uh, sound out of there. Yeah. And so, uh, and me, I've, I've had a few different fretless over the years, and I wanted to get back into it, and I, I wanted to try a short scale, and I found a used bass on eBay, and this is an Ibanez Micro, so it's a short scale. It's a very small bass, and it's passive. It's a very cheap instrument. You could buy these brand new for $179. So I paid considerably less for that than that for it, and uh, it actually sounds okay. So I'm going to be just maybe I'll do a little playing along with them, but uh, we're going to be getting into that, and uh, we'll talk about how Brian created his lines on the songs and everything, and um, we'll go from there. All right. So uh, for a while I was trying to think of. Uh, some really good um, fretless players who I could like listen to and emulate. I couldn't really think of too many guys. I, you know, every, everybody would mention Jocko, of course, and I, I've listened to him quite a bit, and I'm not even going to attempt to do what he does, so he was out of the question. And um, um, one of the guys I thought of was Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam. He did, I think, the whole first Pearl Jam CD. It was called 10. I think he did that whole uh, CD on fretless. If not the whole thing, then a good part of it. And, and it was just great playing and everything. The other guy who came to mind was Jack Bruce. He also played a Warwick thumb. I think it was a four string or five string maybe. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't think he ever went with a six string. No, no. No, that's just extra insanity to add to the problem. So, uh, But with Jack Bruce with Cream, and not only was the a fantastic bass player but he 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 had like an opera style voice that he could he was a great singer mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, a big influence on me as a bass player but not as much by by fretless means so anyway I was trying to think of some different players and um, I wanted to ask Brian a few questions like who he was inspired by so um, first I wanted to find out though how long have you been playing guitar? Because he's not even a bass player by bass player's means. Like, he started on guitar. He's He's been my guitar player for three projects and, and plus a bunch of other side projects. 
and he's a guitar player. I always look at him as a guitar player, but I know he's a great bass player too. Um, and fretless he excels at because he has a melodic nature. So how long have you been playing guitar, first of all? Well, that's hard to say. I started in the seventh grade. Um, <laughs> so that's a couple like, of years ago now it's been. It's 40 years, 50 okay. years. About the same amount of time yeah. as me. So, um, and that's guitar. And then how long before you started playing bass? Well, um, bass actually came in pretty early because I was getting together with my friends and we were jamming and recording on our cassette players and stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'd be at home with an idea and uh, playing the guitar and I was like, well, I, and I got my drum machine and I was like, I really want to hear what the bass would sound like. And I always really, really loved bass. You know, bass is to me just as important as guitar, uh, just as cool. It's, uh, you know, anybody who listens to Gay Lee knows that the bass can be a lead instrument too. And uh, absolutely. So I traded an old guitar of mine with a friend of mine for a bass. He had like an old Apollo bass. It was kind of like a Fender style body, and but it was an Apollo. Uh -huh. And he had chopped it up a little bit to make it look more interesting, but it was a functional bass. Yeah. Probably, you know, about a hundred and $150 bass, yeah. nothing fancy, yeah. but it was enough for me to record and get an idea of what the bass sounded like. And I'd been listening to my buddy learn how to play bass. So I knew the basic scales and all that, so I could figure it out. And uh, I just really had fun doing that. And uh, ever since then, I've been playing guitar and recording and then coming up with my own bass lines on a lot of my songs and uh, just progressing from there. So, to be honest, they've kind of gone hand in hand. So, really. probably maybe you started bass a few years after guitar? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, okay. It's not so, really been so, less. And he, he's, he's been playing guitar more predominantly than bass. Yeah. So, bass was like a second instrument, and now he's up to about five or six other instruments. and. And if you count the different types of guitars he plays, then you add another five or six. But um, bass playing, okay, so now you played bass for years, putting your own tracks on your own recordings. And uh, when did you start playing fretless bass? That's, uh, that's a good question. Um, I had that bass that my friend had traded, and I had that thing for good 10, 15 years, and I was like, man, I really need a really good bass. I wanted a good bass, because I was, I had already gotten some nicer guitars, uh, and, uh, So really, that's when you went to a fretless? And I, I went to the guitar store down in Florida, mm -hmm. and I was looking at all these different basses. You were living in Florida at the time. I was living in Florida yeah. at the time, in Orlando area, and they had a really nice music store there, and I uh, went in and I was looking at different bases and I came across this Fender Jazz Fretless. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those really special bases. It was white and had a matching white headstock. Oh. And it was just beautiful. And I loved how that neck looked with no frets on it. Yeah, it they do look cool. It didn't even have the lines, it just had the dots on the sides. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it just was like, wow, white with that black, it was very striking. And I was like, ah, I won't be able to figure this out. But I asked the guy to let me play it and plugged it into an amp. And it just, I fell in love immediately. And uh, the song, The Oracle, ironically, is the riff that I first played on that jazz bass. Wow. And that, I was like that lazy, uh, smoky jazz right, right. type of feel to that bass line. Just three simple notes, really. So you 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 came up with a really predominant line in that the very first song on that Dimension X CD, the origins, very first time you picked up a fretless. It was the origins were from when I was first. He's played. like a natural. That's why he's my favorite uh, fretless bass player. But it player. just was such a, and it's a very common phrase. Yeah. But it's so fundamental to that type of a feel, and the fretless just. It's perfect for that. Right. Now, who, who were you inspired by when, when you started hearing fretless players? Because at that time, you, didn't, you weren't even aware of fretless players. I really didn't know any at the time. Um, you I just knew, dug the sound. I dug the sound. But then I came to discover 
a lot of great musicians that blew me away, like Jocko Pastorius, uh, Jeff Berlin. Jeff Berlin is one of my favorites. The guy's a monster. I, yeah. I attended a Musicians uh, Institute for a summer session way back in 86, and Jeff came in and played, uh, uh, he did, uh, what do you call it, like a, a symposium? Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, he did a class for us, you yeah, know, yeah, kind of a yeah. class, and he was on the stage and, and uh, talking about it, and uh, he was just, he's just a monster player, and I, I love his playing. I've bought several of his uh, CDs and stuff, so he's great. Yeah. And then, uh, but for j the fretless bass, the one that really caught my attention and really made me stand up and notice was uh, a guy named uh, Ron Gagan. Okay, I think you told me about him before, but I never yeah. heard of him before that. Well, um, he's not really well known. Uh, he um, he plays with a Otmar Liebert, who is a Spanish flamenco okay. new yeah. age musician. Yeah. I did listen to some of his stuff after you told me about that, so. There's someone you can check out right there. Yeah, Otmar Lieber plays classical guitar. He's also a Zen monk, which is really interesting. His music is just embodies classical that's guitar. A, that's a whole story for another day. Yeah, and uh, but Ron <laughs> Gagan is the only musician that's been with him since the beginning, 1990. Wow, okay. And uh, his bass tone is so phenomenal. He gets that moi sound. Yeah, oh yeah. And... Uh, you know, Jocko is very staccato and fast and yep. technical. Yeah. Yep. But Ron Gagan encompasses that thing I like, which is the moi. Yeah. He's at the other end of the scale. And melodic. Yeah. He does all the counter melodies to what the Otmar Liebert's doing. Yeah. Which is just fantastic. It's just unbelievable what he can do with the instrument. Now, what I what I found kind of interesting with, with with Brian's playing, he's a very very melodic guitar player and a very melodic fretless bass player, but I don't hear that melodic nature come in when he's playing a fret, fretted bass as much. No. Why is that? It's like they're totally different mindsets. Um, I, uh, I really like Getty Lee, and when I'm playing a fretted instrument, I tend to get more Try to be more busy, like get a little him. busy, huh? I get busier, and uh, <laughs> and then when I'm on the fretless, it's more of a peaceful approach. Yeah. And uh, Ron Gagan really influences me there. He and it's uh, it's it's just totally different mindsets, like putting on a different hat, a different job. Well, before we we uh. uh Turn on the music. We're going to do some playing to the music, and Brian will show us exactly what he's doing because some of his melodic moves are very interesting, and uh, the songs are really beautiful. So, um, but uh, how? I just wanted to ask you how how Dimension X came about as far as those particular songs that we ended up putting on the CD. How did they just? You just started writing them a long time ago. I know that some of right. them are. 20 years old, if not more. Well, a lot of it had to do with, you know, I would be refining them over the years, those riffs yeah. and things. Like uh, like when I first came up with uh, the Oracle, it wasn't really the Oracle at the very beginning. There was that basic guitar, bass riff, and then the guitar kind of going over it. And then I would get better music equipment, better recording equipment, and I would refine it a little more. Uh -huh. And finally, when we get into the area of Pro Tools after many years, um, I was recording good enough and performing good enough that I could, you know, these were things that could be refined even farther and bring other people in to help with. And uh, so uh, I, the Oracle was really influenced by that very first jazz bass I had. Uh -huh. And uh, I got my other, my Warwick finally, because I had traded the uh, original jazz bass in, unfortunately. So that song really kind of evolved over a long time. Right. Now the Warwick, this thing, uh, it's not just the bass itself, but it's they use uh, MEC pickups. I don't know if they if they make them or if MEC is a separate company or not. Uh, these but, are actually Bartolini's on this. One. Oh, okay. All right. Well, what what I was going to say is uh, on the on the ones with the MEC, the MEC has their own tone for for pickups. 
Bartolini is like my favorite pickup of choice uh, with my instruments. Hey, I was just curious. That's an odd shirt you got on there. Who is that? I can't see with your beard covering his head. That's Alex Lampson from Rush. Oh, I thought it, <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was him or or um, uh, Ozzy's guitar player. What's his name? Oh, um, Randy Rose. Randy. I thought it might be Randy. Yeah, long Rose. blonde hair, but yeah. uh, that's Alex Lampson. Yeah. Just a weird shirt. Yeah. See him running around It'll, with a briefcase. He's got a briefcase full of blues and he's reading the news. So <laughs> anyway, okay, so we're going to we're going to get on with the uh music uh, segment here and uh we'll start um we'll just uh, go over a few of the songs. We're only going to hit four songs real quick, but I wanted you guys to get an idea of his background and uh you know uh how things came about and everything. And um uh, I want you to tell me who your favorite fretless bass players are, because I really couldn't think of too many. I mean, there's a few here and there, but who is really, and it doesn't matter if it's rock or jazz or whatever, just let me know who they are, and uh, I don't need a big list, just maybe your top two or three favorites who you really like, I'd appreciate that, I'd like to hear who other people are listening to. Okay, so we're going to get on with the music. So we're going to get our basses hooked up and uh, turn on some music. Okay, so here we are. We got our uh, basses hooked up and plugged in, got the headphones on, and um, we're just going to listen to the very first track on the Dimension X, a Hazel Fire CD. It's called The Oracle, and this is Brian's, the, the main riff is Brian's, the very first riff he ever played on the fretless bass a long time ago. Yeah, that so, lazy blues, yeah, simple three piece. So we'll listen. Yeah, we'll listen to this, and then we'll uh, talk about it and uh, just see how how he did that. All right, here we go. All right. So that was really a very basic intro there, but... So it's off a of B, uh, which is, I think that's a little unusual for you to play in that key, but... So I learned the song, and it, uh, you, go ahead, tell them what you're doing. Well, it's just a real basic... Uh... It has that lazy vibe to it and all that, and it's just a... Definitely laid back. And uh, I'm taking the opportunity every now and then to kind of act like a trombone with the... You know, oh, wow. Okay. You know, every, yeah. Like you're during the riff. You know, things cool. like that in there. To, I didn't think of that, but that's that's a good point. I hear those slides in there, and I love a slide on the fretless. So, and it's it's like, and that's another thing that kind of hit me is the bass is sort of like a trombone. So you kind of draw out those notes that have a pause after them, and you can kind of drag right. them. And that's a good idea to uh, to uh, look at it as a, a a horn instrument because that gives you a whole other box of tricks really. yeah and then you got a little bit different perspective yeah. on it and all that uh it's a support instrument it's an accentuating instrument it fills a void sometimes right and i'll do those slides like anytime there's a chord change sometimes show the people what that other line was Okay, we're, we're going to song number two, and this is Hazel Fire, another really pretty song. And we just had to kind of relearn it together because, again, it's a simple song, but some of the Brian's uh, notes are open and it throws you off. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Hazel Fire. Yeah. 
Okay, so you got a feel for that. So that's just like D, C, G. And then what we figured out is doing an open E and G, D, and another open E, right? So he throws in these open notes and it really uh, creates a whole nother kind of dimension. So D, D, C, Look at a basic pattern right there. No, that's a basic pattern. And then I would throw in the open notes to just spice it up a little bit. Listen how pretty that Warwick sounds. I think it's awesome. Didn't do a lot of sliding on that. Because that would have taken away from the other things going on. Um, anyway, we're going to move over to uh, Lonely Caravan. So I'm going to get it set up. Here we go. Really beautiful song. It's an instrumental, no, no vocals. And I got this as the whole song is E, A, and D. having three lead instruments at the same time but they're not being too busy they're, they're not stepping on each other's toes they're right. doing their own thing like uh, when we play with our uh, instrumental rock band that's uh, the uh, backseat driver CD I was telling you about Brian and I will both be playing he'll be playing guitar I'll be playing a fretted bass and we'll both be doing leads at the same time but one of us will usually be high and one of us will be low and then we'll switch it you know so Cool. All right, so this next song, this is the killer song. This is uh, Late Night in Jazz City, and I would have to say this is probably like a master class in fretless bass playing because he was doing some tricky stuff on this. Um, right off the bat, you're going to notice it, there, it starts with a bend off the A, and then it's going to go D, G, C, and he's using an open E string in there. Um, and then we got another part so anyway just the song is crazy crazy good um, the, listen to the vocalists in here they're outstanding and the saxophone and it took so long just to find a drummer we went through probably six or seven drummers before we could find a drummer who could actually play this 
because it was already recorded and you got to come in at the right spot. So um, uh, uh, Drew Orton, uh, the great drummer, Drew Orton from uh, Virginia Beach area, wherever. Yeah. I'm not sure what town he lives in, but he's around here somewhere. And uh, he, he did the drums for us. And it, really good. But ch check this out now. Come on, here it goes. Mm. It's late night in Jazz City. I hear my darling's voice. Late night in Jazz City. Whisper in my ear. Late night in Jazz City. Wow. As we walk along. Street lamps from their light. Reveal. I hold my lover's hand Walking down the street Oh man, that was crazy. So what I noticed Brian is doing is he's doing one part where he's throwing an open string and then when he's coming up higher, he's throwing in uh, a, a, a fifth on the chord. So just show them what you were just doing. Just play that line. The song first starts, he's doing like a bend. Not, not, not that kind of a bend, it's like a... All right. 
pretty wild song there. But um, here's here's uh, Brian's talent here. All these songs, he wrote all of them, played all the fretless on them and the guitars, and uh, we kind of produced the whole thing together, and uh, then we put it out on that CD. I, when I heard these songs, I said, man, these songs are so great, you got to release them. So we ended up uh, doing it over time, bringing in different yeah. players and singers, a lot of session players on that. So hope you uh, got something out of this, and um, if you uh, did, you liked it, give us uh, the old YouTube thumbs up. And uh, subscribe to the channel. That helps us. And uh, that's it. We're going to put some links down at the bottom of the page here when we're editing. So if you want to pick up some of those CDs or you can download them or whatever you want to do. Uh, and uh, Brian, is there anything else you want to say to the nice people out there? Well, thank you for watching. And uh, would love to hear about what fretless bases you like. Uh, and... What's bass up? players. Yeah, bass players. Uh, if you have a song that you want to share, give us a link yeah. to it. Send us a link, and if you have any questions for me or Brian, just send them out to me, and I'll shoot it over to him if it's for him, and uh, we'll uh, get you some answers. All right? Thanks a lot for listening. Okay. Thanks. All right. Adios.